Well, hello there. Welcome to School of the Spirit. I'm so excited to come your way again on this platform where we discuss matters of the Spirit. This is a platform for you to become intimate with deeper truths as touching the things of the Spirit. Your growth, your spiritual growth and development, your intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit and coming into deeper understanding of who God really is. Now, we've been discussing about discerning or spiritual discernment. Um, and we've broken it into different parts um, so that we can better appreciate this topic as it has to do with the entirety of the Christian faith. We've talked about discerning the voice of God. We've talked about what spiritual discernment is all about. We've talked about discerning the will of God. And we want to talk about discerning spirits, which is a very interesting aspect of spiritual discernment. And I've told you that discernment means to understand, to comprehend, or to come into the depths of the truth of a particular being, a thing, or an individual. And um, we want to trust God that we sustain spiritual discernment in the days ahead that we are matured in this aspect of our faith as believers now i want to read this scripture for you in first john chapter 4 verses 1 to 6 in first john chapter 4 verses 1 to 6 we are talking about discerning spirits Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God, and he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So practically this scripture is dealing with our ability to discern our ability as well as the importance of discerning spirits and it's important to take note of the first verse and the sixth verse where we read the first verse says to test spirits to test the spirit in other words to discern the spirit this means that behind everything we find functioning operating in our world today are spirit influences there are spirit influences behind human individuals behind human systems behind human governments behind technological advancement behind all manner of things manifesting in our world today and so the bible tells us that for us to know the reality of a thing we must be able to probe or discern the spirit dimension to that thing and it says that we should test spirits that means there is a way there is a pattern for discerning the spirit dimension of a thing for discerning the spirit influencing a particular thing or individual and in verse 6 it says that we are of God he who knows God hears us he who is not of God does not hear us by this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error that means that everyone that affirms to what we do because we are of god and we are in the truth have the spirit of truth in them but every anyone that is opposed to what we do um, on the basis of scripture have behind them the influence of the spirit of error you must understand that the spirit of a thing is the very life of that thing. The spirit of a thing 
is the force of that thing is the source of that thing is the reality of that thing truth is a reality that is domiciled within spiritual systems truth is best understood from the spiritual context of it in other words you cannot know the truth of a thing if you have not probed or discerned into the spirit dimension of that thing now there are different types of spirits first of all there is the holy spirit which the bible calls the spirit of god there are angels in psalms 104 verse 4 the bible says he makes his angels spirits and his ministers flames of fire now among these angels they are categorized into two there are celestial angels the angels that serve the purposes of god the angels that minister around the throne of god the angels that are sent forth as ministering spirits to minister for the saints as you find in hebrews chapter 1 verses 14 but then there are also another category that the bible describes as fallen angels here's how the bible puts it in jude he says that angels that kept not their former estate these are the spirits that in partnership with lucifer rebelled against the government of god and were cast down from heaven they are still spirits but they are no longer celestial spirits. they are no longer divine the divine nature their divine nature has been corrupted so we refer to them as fallen angels and i will encourage you to study deeper about fallen angels maybe sometime later we can do a teaching on angels so you can get to understand them there are also human spirits the bible speaks of human spirit in proverbs chapter 18 and in verse 12 or sorry proverbs chapter 18 and in verse 14 the bible speaks of human spirits it says the spirit of a man will sustain him in his infirmity it says but a broken spirit who can bear a broken spirit who can bear so there are human spirits as a matter of fact there's a portion in ecclesiastes where it speaks of the spirit of the man that goes downward and the soul the spirit of a man that goes upward to god and the soul of a man that uh, the soul of an animal that goes downward to the earth and then there are demons demons are also a type of spirits they are simply referred to as disembodied spirits disembodied because in genesis chapter 6 the bible speaks of the sons of god of course which were fallen angels the bible says they had affairs sexual relations with the daughters of men and as a result a new breed a new species was introduced on earth the bible called them giants or in the hebrew they are described as nephilims the mighty ones now after the flood of noah of you must understand that all of these people were destroyed by the flood of noah their bodies were destroyed but the spirits that inhabited those bodies were not destroyed and so they keep roaming around the earth which is now their newfound territory looking for bodies to possess whether they are animal bodies or human bodies so in a quick these are the different types of spirits that we have and you can discern each of these spirits there are 10 facts i want you to know about spirits before we go deeper into the discussion of discerning spirits number one if you know these 10 facts it will help you in your ability to discern the spirit influencing an individual or the spirit behind a system number one 
Spirit beings are real beings. You must know that. Spirit beings are real beings. They are not just the pigment of the imagination of, an, of a man. Spirit beings are real beings. They exist. They live. They thrive. They are in our world today. Even though they can't be seen by the naked human eye. There are several other things that cannot be seen by the human eye. For instance, an atom, which is the smallest indivisible part of an element, cannot be seen by human eyes. But an atom is the basis for all life. Because an atom is what forms an element. And these are the formative structures of everything existing in our world today. So the fact that they are unseen with the human eye doesn't mean they are unreal. Spirit beings are real beings. Number two, spirits are timeless. Spirits are timeless. They are not time bound. They exist in different dispensations. They, they don't, there is no time to them. We have a time system on earth to regulate the activities of man. So there are times when men are awake and there are times when men go to sleep. But in the realm of the spirit, there is nothing like that. There is no time to sleep or time to be awake. They are not regulated by time. Time only regulates ma this material universe. Number three, spirits are ageless. They have no age. In fact, these things are now depicted in vampire movies produced from Hollywood today. And all of these movies, when we watch them, it's important that we become wise to know what's happening in our world today. That there are beings living amongst us, possessed by spirits who are ageless, who are without uh, age. The Bible even spoke of Melchizedek, uh, a pre-incarnate manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible referred to him in Hebrews chapter 7 as one that had neither beginning of days nor end of life. So spirits are ageless. Number four, spirits can grow. Spirits can grow. Just like as a human being you can grow. Spirits can grow. But in their own fashion of growth, not necessarily like us. You see, human beings grow till they grow old. But spirits don't grow old. The more they grow, the better and the more efficient they are. We'll talk about this in the second part. Number five, spirits are without gender. Spirits are without gender. They are neither male nor female. We read the scriptures in Mark chapter 13 when Jesus was are faced with a question by the scribes and the Pharisees about the woman who got married to seven brothers and they all died and she died and none had children by her. And Jesus answered them. He says, there will be no marriage in heaven because everybody will be like the angels who neither marry or are given to marry. And that's because they are without gender. That means that the Holy Spirit doesn't really have a gender. He's neither male nor female. We only attach gender when describing spirits within the context of their manifestation. That's when gender is brought in for clearer understanding um, of the individual. Number six, spirits seek expressions in the material universe. Of course, spirits want to find expression in our world today. They look for everything that can play host to their personality. Number seven, spirits desire worship. In fact, in John chapter 4 verse 24, the Bible speaks of God who is spirit and that those who worship him must worship him. Must meaning necessity. Every spirit desires worship. It's in them somehow and it will find expression when you interact with them. Number eight, spirits relate with mortals on the basis of covenant. Covenant is an economy that is exported into the world of men from the realm of the spirit. It is the basis upon which spirit and mortal transactions are done. Covenants. We'll do more to talk about covenants 
in subsequent episodes and that's the reason why in the bible we have the old covenant and the new covenant the old covenant was a spirit god in covenant with a nation israel a new covenant was a spirit god in covenant with those who are born of the spirit through christ jesus number nine spirits are known by the characteristics they exhibit in the mortal vessels that play host to them they exhibit their characteristic features through the mortal or human vessels that play host to them i use the word mortal because it's not only in a human being that the spirit can manifest they can manifest through animals through birds so they exhibit their characteristics through the mortal vessels that play host to them and then finally number 10 spirits communicate spirits communicate in fact in the realm of the spirit there are verbal and non-verbal forms of communication a spirit can speak words but a spirit can also communicate without speaking as well as can speak and it is important to understand the communicative aspects of spirit because it is integral in discerning spirits in discerning who they are and how they behave and i'm going to meet you in the next episode where we will discuss more elaborately and extensively on these 10 facts and then we'll probe deeper on how you can discern a spirit god bless you and thank you so much